Ichigo, I'm home. Okarina sai, Kevin Kun. Kyuka wa yokata de ka? I'll call you back. This may be an obvious question, but what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just playing the Super Mario World. It's my favorite game for the Nintendo NES. <laughs> Good call, I love it too. Now that we've established that, get out of my house. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you that Strawberry Dragon Gamer guy who did my April Fool's episode a while back? I thought I'd never see you again. This is Kevin with the Strawberry Dragon Gamer. Yeah, we're not gonna see him again. See, I did say that. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Wait, I did Doom, didn't I? Yeah, it's a shame they messed up that port, because the original for PC was one of the best games I've ever played. Wait, so it wasn't originally for the... The Super NES? No. Speaking of which, Super Mario World was made for the Super Nintendo, not the original Nintendo. I wasn't asking for your opinion. <laughs> okay, first, I was correcting a fact, not an opinion. Second, Jesus Christ, man, you can't just call someone an I guess I'm going to have to kill you now. Dude, don't shoot. How about a review? What of? Well, I looked over your collection. It's kind of dinky. Oh, right, because you don't save your money and prepare for your future or anything. But I found this one game that's been a real favorite of mine. Rollerblade Racer. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. That's like Paperboy, isn't it? Yeah, sure, let me give it a spin. But first, you're going to have to... The... Right, right. Well, the pest is gone. Time to play some Nintendo. This was the worst video game I have ever played. Wait. This was the worst video game I have ever played on the NES. Find out how bad after this. In Rollerblade Racer, which is in fact a port of a PC game of the same name, you play as Kirk, a boy who just purchased new skating gear and wants to compete in a competition. Jump in the gun there, buddy. I didn't get as many views as a nostalgia critic the moment I sat in front of the camera. And I still don't. So in order to get him there, you have to control him and score at least 5,000 points in his journey across four levels. However, this is one of the most pointless requirements in all of gaming, since you score points every time you jump, and you'll be doing a lot of it to survive the levels. So here's the first level, taking place in a suburban neighborhood, and we see that the game is displayed in an isometric viewpoint. Remind you of anything? Oh hey, it's Paperboy! <laughs> Remember this arcade classic? What a wacky game that was! Sure, the NES port was rather stripped down and it doesn't offer any insight into the human condition, but it plays well. You sure you don't want me to review that? No. Now get back to Rollerblade Racer. The heck? I told you to get out of my house! Actually, no. I just popped in to tell you that and now I'll be leaving. Well, he may be many unsavory things, but at least he's honest. Back to Rollerblade Racer. The perspective, combined with the player character's position on screen, gives you a very short range of visibility. For the two stages that actually test your skills, you are ill-prepared to survive everything being thrown at you. Be it trash cans, open manholes, or even cracks in the pavement. Cracks are the worst. Not only are they everywhere on certain levels, but their irregular shapes make them hard to avoid. And you'd think you'd just be able to roll over them, right? No dice. Even the hit detection is tipped a little against your favor. There are no continues in this game either. You can only take four hits times three lives before the game kicks you back to the neighborhood level without so much as a title screen. Oddly, the injuries counter goes up with damage whilst the lives counter goes down. Um, consistency please? After finishing the first level, you are automatically put through a bonus stage where you jump over barrels, and after that is your second level, a city. Get this. 
you can breeze through the second and third levels by finding the right line and going straight forward, not maneuvering at all except for jumping, and lots of it just to build up points. <laughs> I mean, what kind of video game lets you breeze through a level without obstruction? The next bonus stage is a maze of traffic pylons, and after that is the third level set on a beach. Funny thing about this level is, if you're willing to take a hit, you can scoot over to the left side of the trees and once again take a relatively unobstructed path to the finish. As you may have noticed by now, the graphics are poorly drawn and the isometric camera angle is awkward compared to other games that use the technique. Even the music, which is composed without any regard to the basic concept of melody, is well below the Call of Duty. The music gets cut off by sound effects, which is a limitation of the NES's sound hardware, but frankly, I'm thankful for that, because the music plays at this low frequency which I'm surprised hasn't given me an aneurysm. Don't expect the story to give you any memorable moments either, in a good way at least. The game is less than 10 minutes long. Seriously, I made a let's play of it on my main channel and it took less than 10 minutes. Seriously, this is the shortest game I can think of outside of all that casual junk. Now back on point, after finishing a level, the game gives you a safety tip for roller skating in the real world. Well, they've done one thing right because you will want to go out roller skating. Oh, not because of how the game portrays the activity, but because the game's so bad you'll take any opportunity to do something other than finish it. I suppose I shouldn't be so hard on a video game that encourages physical exercise, but I have so far, and I'm not done yet. The third bonus stage, a halfpipe, is a breather. And good thing, too. It's followed by the fourth level, the park. Oh brother, this one is long and loaded with traps. As if it weren't enough for the levels to gangbang you with obstacles, you have to wrestle with the controls at the same time. You hold up to accelerate forward, but it takes so long to get up to speed that there had better be nothing in your way. Even worse, if your thumb accidentally slips to the left or right, you'll stop going forward as you unintentionally move to the side. A makes you jump, which as we discussed gives you points, and holding B makes you crouch down, which maintains your forward momentum. However, if you jump while crouching, you'll perform a spinning jump trick. In theory, this should net you even more points, but this is impossible to pull off before landing, and you'll just take an injury for your efforts. And it's not even worth risking another entry when you can just keep jumping off the ground to get more points faster. Oh, did I mention there's a time limit? Yeah, that's really tense. Come on, come on! Oh, what the Van Halen? I rolled over the line! Let's say you've made it past that fourth level, and now you get to enter the championship. So, have you all been suitably psyched up for it? Good, because it's just the three bonus courses smashed into one. Oh, but Rollerblade Racer saves its most heinous failing for last. It turns out that you have to score 20,000 points to get the best ending, so if you finish with anything less than that, the game just kicks you out one more time after having beaten you half to death. And get this, the best ending even has a typo on it. I'll spoil it so you have no reason whatsoever to play this game. Awesome, we were ballistic. First place, I can't wait wait for us to do it again. You read that right, they used the word wait twice in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, they just didn't freaking care. I can't wait, wait to quit playing this piece. Well, that was the most disappointing ending since Mass Effect 3. Wait, strike that, reverse it. Either way, as the great video game critic Thomas Hobbes once said, Rollerblade Racer is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. But since Rollerblade Racer was released in 1993, a time when the Super NES and Sega Genesis were battling it out for people's money, er, attention, not many people were exposed to the game's hazards. It was a low-profile disaster made by six people, two producers, two programmers, and two artists, who got way more credit than they deserve for the product of their figurative loins. When we look back on all the games that proved to be a waste of cartridge or disc space, I urge you to mention Rollerblade Racer in the same breath with all those infamous duds we know and loathe. Rollerblade Racer scores 15%, an F. This is Kevin, with Ichigo, and you are the Resistance.
I don't always ask for subscribers, but when I do, I can't wait, wait to do it again. Stay thirsty, my friends.